So, Molly Scott Cato. Thank you very much, Chair. So, on this important matter, the Council and the Commission have already reached an agreement, and we are being asked, as the Parliament, to simply wave this through. This is why there's a lot of focus on the, on the timeline here. But our role is as representatives, and we should know that weakly regulated securitization was one of the key causes of the 2008 financial crisis, and that the people we represent have a great concern that such a crisis should not arise again. So it's essential that we do our job properly and we take the necessary time to do it. So my question is, in whose interest is it that we agree this so rapidly? We are being told that this will assist economic expansion by ensuring finance flows to SMEs. But is this a real solution to the problem that we face? Where is the evidence that renewing and expanding securitization will actually help SMEs? SME loan supply, in my view, is not the problem. What is the problem is a lack of joined up collective action at fiscal and economic level. In other words, austerity policies are undermining demand and investor confidence, which is the real threat to the European economy. We also have evidence from SMEs themselves that they don't think this is a solution to their problems or that this is even the problem they're facing. An ECB survey finds that euro area SMEs considered access to finance to be the least important problem they faced. 11% of respondents said finance was their main problem, compared to 25 who said that the lack of customers was their main problem. So the suspicion is that the pressure to hurry this through is coming from the finance sector. As Greens, we would do nothing to encourage the expansion of securitization and would resist this pressure coming from finance. If we cannot find a majority for this, however, we will ensure that all risks are removed from securitization so that European citizens are protected from the risk of another financial and economic crisis that they will be required to pay for. So to ensure greater risks, we have a number of areas where we will focus our amendments. Firstly, the issue that's already been raised of skin in the game. How can we ensure an originate-to-distribute model doesn't lower incentives for banks to lend prudently? So far, the main instrument that's being proposed is for banks to maintain a certain exposure to future risk. But what about the possibility of requiring banks to retain the loans for a few years before they securitize them, in other words, demonstrating their historic viability? Since credit problems usually materialize early on in the loan period, restricting securitization to these sorts of seasoned loans would be the best protection against the garbage in, garbage out risk that securitization poses. So we, we would suggest that either you retain the potential future risk or you allow the, the loans to prove their worth before you securitize them or you make some combination of the two. Now on the question of who should regulate the securities, we continue to make the mistake of creating Bi Byzantine legal texts that try to cover all business model and models and activities. Is this not a case where in fact specialized securitization houses would be an, an effective and efficient measure? They could be subject to a specific regulatory regime covering the sourcing, warehousing and security issuance phases for the securitized products, and they could be the only special purpose entities from which primary issuance, issuance can be purchased. We would be thoroughly opposed to a self-certification model, and especially with the current suggestions that the, the sanctions or fines um, for fraudulent self-certification should be reduced. We also suggest there's a need for strong EU coordination at supervisory level and effective macroprudential tracking of risks transferred through securitization and strong powers to intervene to prevent problems. And finally, we will be working to achieve an explicit ban on tranching. From a risk point of view, tranching is obviously crucial to the systemic risk that securitization poses and it was central to the problems that were caused by securitization during the financial crisis. So to conclude, we wait with interest to see the rapporteur's full report. We thank him very much for the extremely useful working document that arrived last week, and we look forward to constructive cooperation to ensure that our objective is to rebuild the European economy rather than focusing on the needs of the self-serving, purely financial economy and the needs of the ECB in the pursuit of its monetary policy.